It's funny how things turn out. Three years and a fab time in Atomic Kitten, and then somehow end up in the jungle. But even though I fought off flies, worms and snakes, ugh, it was my boobs which became the story. The paper said that they'd shrunk when they hadn't. That's just the size they've always been. Check it out. When people see me on TV and in magazines, they may think I'm confident about my body. But like most women out there, I'm not completely happy with my boobs. I used to wish they were bigger, and nowadays they resemble tea bags after they've been dumped. So I've decided to go on a journey to find out more about boobs, and hopefully in the process, learn to love mine a little bit more. Everywhere I look, all I see is women flaunting their perfect boobs, and they just seem to be getting bigger and bigger and perter and firmer. There's just so much pressure to have the perfect pair. It's funny how man only thinks about the You got a real big heart, but I'm looking at you. You got real big brains, but I'm looking at you. Girl, it ain't no yeah, that's it. Big boobs make the lads' mags and tabloids loads of cash. If you're famous but less well endowed, there's someone out there who can fix it. Photographer Jens Wilkem knows just how to do it. Hello. Hi. Hi, I'm Jenny. Jens. Nice, nice to meet, to meet you. you. I've done some um, shoots for Lads Magazine, like FHM, Maxim and Arena. And when I've done the shoots, like, um, you look at the Polaroids and like they look nice with the lights and the makeup and everything, but then you see the pictures back and they look amazing because they airbrush you beyond an inch of your life, which is good because I don't mind that. No, you're like, oh, God, I've got big <laughs> boobs and long legs. It's great. Is it fair that it gives sort of false, you know, for all the young girls out there that are looking and thinking, oh, I want to look like that? It's, it's, you know, it's not realistic, really, is it? No, it's not realistic. Of course, it's a little bit unfair, but that's the game. But you're selling you from know. men, so you're not really that Exactly, bothered, exactly. With the men's magazines, lads' mags, how do they want women's boobs to look? Is it big, small, fake, natural? And what's your preference? OK, I'll start with my preference. Okay. I definitely prefer natural. Mm -hmm. In the industry that I'm in, I'm a photographer, sometimes a fake boob can be more... You can take more photos with the boob looking nice because, yeah. you know, all the poses, lying down, crawling, they all look good if you have fake yeah. boobs because they're just stuck on. So I've heard you're a bit of a whiz with the airbrush. How often does, I mean, do all shots get airbrushed? It depends on the girl. Um, if there are, there are times when the girl is just perfect, but not very often. There's always, very a bit often. Of, there's always a bit of retouching. So how does he boost the cleavage? So if I want this to be a little bit bigger, I just Sorry. make it a little um, bit bigger. Just a cup size bigger in a, in a couple of seconds. And what you do after that, you slim the arms down a little bit, giving the, gives the impression that the boobs are even bigger. If you're into big boobs, which men's magazines usually are. Pull the stomach in a bit, and then we can have a little before and after, I'll show you. Girls like their hair big, big of course, also, so let's make the hair a little bit bigger. Okay. Now you can see before and after. Just in a couple of seconds. If anyone knows my insecurities about my boobs, it's my mum. She supported me from when I started as a model at the age of 16 to when I joined my first girl band, Precious, at 21. Say the words I heard you and we've often been bemused with how much I've been airbrushed. But, I mean, some of these magazines, though, I mean, for example, this one, this was years ago, this was when I was in Precious. I mean, look at my boobs there. They are blatantly not my boobs. They've just put boobs. your head on another body. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not my boobs. Yeah. I've never had boobs that big. I mean, I'd, that was probably... Things like this is probably why I went through a phase one to the boob job, because I thought, ooh, quite like them. <laughs> no, they're not mine, but... Do you think there is pressure and... A lot of it is, is because of, like, the lads' mags and the way they airbrush people's boobs, to, to have perfect boobs? Oh, undoubtedly, yeah. I, th I think... I think there's the, the someone somewhere who's decided what is the norm and what, and what is perfect in his or her estimation, and everything has been geared to that. So if someone said, well, we don't like her boob, this is the perfect boob. Yeah. I mean, I know I'm always saying that I want bigger boobs. <laughs> I mean, I think I'm over the bigger boob thing now. I don't want bigger boobs. I think they're going the wrong way fast. 
But, um, you know, they're starting to go, gravity's starting to take hold. No, I think you've got the perfect, perfect size. I did go through a phase of really wanting a boob job, though. And you were just like, what did you think when I said I wanted a boob job? I was horrified. <laughs> I really was. No, no. I mean, big boobs are great, but for people who want them, you, you don't suit them. I think your, your body, your body size, your body structure is meant for the size that you are. The tiny boobs. For pet, nice boobs. It's just a fashion thing. You don't want them to be huge because they can, they can be offensive. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard and they're like, it's better than yours. Damn right. But is my mum right? Can boobs be too big? Glamour model Ashley Bond made her name, fame and probably a small fortune from having Britain's biggest boobs. She boosted her 32C chest to a 32 double H. I know I'm not satisfied with mine, but is she happy with hers? Hello. Hi, hello. I am Jen. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi, right. This is George. Hello, George. <laughs> oh, he's Vikings. Come in. <laughs> She's invited me and my dog, George Michael, round for dinner with her mum and one of her mates. Is allowed on the car. After 12 years, Ashley has retired from glamour modelling and is back to being Jane again. Unfortunately for her, she can't retire her boobs quite so easily. Hey. Now, four and a half months pregnant with her second child, something surprising is happening to Jane. She's already started to leak milk. Obviously, with me having the implant on the inside, um, that tends to do what a baby's head does on the outside, so it stimulates it from really early on, So, which is why, like, now I'm four and a half months, but I'm still leaking all over. What, so, so it's... because the implants, you, you leak yeah, because earlier. Yeah, because mine are so extreme. It's, you know, the pressure, they've said, that's why I leak early, the pressure of those sort of rubbing, it's doing, like, a stimulating effect, which is what okay. a baby's head would do on the outside, because, I mean, let's face it, it's a similar size, isn't it, at the end of the day? Jane was 21 when she had her first implants, but one cup size to a 32D. There we are. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. Jane, why did you have the implants in the first place? I don't really know, Jenny, to be honest. I mean, because I just think it was jumping on the bandwagon of every other glam model that was out there, because it was the in thing to do 12 years ago to get implants, and... Cause, because I was naturally a C cup, so for my height and frame, C be big, yeah, big. Because I'm like sort of five foot tall, and obviously when I'm not pregnant, size six. Jane later swapped her D cups for E cups, and then a surgeon fitted her with a special implant with a built-in pump, which took her to a gigantic double H. It's a bag that they actually fill with saline, which is salt water, with a little valve from under your armpit. They pump it up slowly. And then, obviously, as the swelling goes down, they can keep adding saline to the actual, you know, bag. So what my surgeon did was obviously exploit this to the extreme, and we just kept adding, like, 50 mils at a time. Because I was young and just wanted the biggest boobs in Britain, <laughs> you know, it, for then it was like, just do it, I don't care, do you know what I mean? But I went up to a 32 double H, and I probably could have still had some in then, but at that... Uh, I mean now, mm -hmm. and now I'm. I mean, you can you can say I've probably got an extra stone added to my body at like half a stone each. Literally, feel the weight. Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> like, so th there's like an extra stone like added. Have we done it? When Jane first had the implants done the very first time, were you, were you sort of dubious or against it? Or I was definitely against it, definitely because I thought she was as she were natural. She looked fine. I didn't think she needed to go any bigger. Being pregnant with all the extra weight on top is causing Jane real problems. Joking apart, my internal organs are literally like my stomach's crushed in between like the baby and the implants. It's discomfort and I have to sleep sitting up because otherwise I literally like with the weight that's pushing up on my lungs and the breath pressing down, mm -hmm. it makes me when I'm asleep very breathless. Like now, probably once I've had this baby, I probably will go smaller because just things like family holidays, Johnny, are like difficult or going swimming. It's just hard, you know, being stared at for I was by the swimming pool on holiday and you come out, I'll be for you, man. <laughs> like that. That. Oh. But I want a size that's going to be where I can just... Natural. Yeah, like, what could be natural, where I can yeah, go to a shop, natural. not have, like, people tripping over dustbins that are, like, stuck to the floor and falling into the trees and that. <laughs> if only. But really, close up, Jane's boobs are rather extreme. I'm certainly not keen on mine being as big as hers, but me and my mates from my old band Precious have tried every trick in the book, bar surgery, to enhance our cleavages. 
I think over the years, me and Annie, I think we've shoved all things from socks, <laughs> sneakers. Yeah. Oi, that's a secret. <laughs> oh, we've put an array of, array of various Lots things of down various bras. things down bras in order to kind of pad out very gorgeous outfits. I remember the Brits. <laughs> yes, it was. it was a very drunk night out, but um, it was Jenny's great idea to stuff my top with... Um, <laughs> a woman's product, A woman's shall we product, say. <laughs> which uh, worked very well. It was good because you stuck them on, didn't you? Yeah. Anyway, it worked. It, it did work <laughs> Well, it didn't look too clever in the morning when you had them stuck to your face. <laughs> My boyfriend Dom has had to put up with the extraordinary lengths I'll go to to enhance my cleavage. I actually went on a night out and I had this stunning... It was Dom's 40th birthday, that I Stella McCartney corset on, and everyone's going, oh, my God, you look really nice. And I bent over and I had one of Dom's sports socks. <laughs> <laughs> because the fillies wouldn't stay in there because he couldn't wear a bra. Oh. So I thought, what can I wear? Hmm. Socks, right. <laughs> oh. It worked, though. those gel bras that you got once. Didn't you get sent a gel <gasps> yeah, yeah. bra? They were a bit miraculous, really. Yeah. Well, the gel bras, that's what I wore the first night I, um... <laughs> oh. I <laughs> had with Dom, and um, I took it off, and it went... <laughs> oh, no. It landed on the it's floor. Like, Why is that so heavy? It's <laughs> like, <laughs> so I had these huge knockers, and all of a sudden this bra came off. It was like... Oh. <laughs> I'm jealous of your boobs. Yeah, I'm very jealous of your yeah, boobs. Yeah, do you want them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if we were on holiday one year, oh. we were all topless, this is a bad story. sunbathing on holiday, and then um, Dom went... My, Sophie, you've got great tits. <laughs> <laughs> I was like... Mm. <laughs> and I felt so deflated, literally. <laughs> <laughs> I was like... How would you like if I said your man a really nice willy? <laughs> oh. I've always been really self-conscious about my boobs, so you can imagine how mortified I was when one of them popped out during a performance at Party in the Park. In front of Prince Charles as well. But if I'm going to learn to like my boobs more, maybe it's time to come face to face with my size and shape. So I've come to have a cast taken of my boobs. Hello. <gasps> wow. Hello, Jenny. Hello. I'm Jenny. Nice to meet you. And you too. Always nice mm -hmm. to meet you. Hello. Hello. It's Jenny, Jenny, my wife. Nice to Hello. Meet you. That'd be oh, to Jenny's <laughs> the best way to it. Wow, it's amazing. Looking here. forward to it. No, if I can. <laughs> so are these all models around me? These, who, who are these well, people? Well, they're simply with? yourself. They're celebrities, they're models, they're the public. Ken's got a lot of persuading to do before I bare my boobs. I'm still not sure whether I'm going to take the plunge. Right, I'm going to come clean here. No, I don't want a boob job, but yes, I'm still very curious about them. I mean, last year, more than 5,000 women had it done, some of them in their lunch hour. Me, personally, I prefer a glass of wine. But because I'm nosy, I'm going to go and see for myself what actually happens when you have a boob job. Hello, I'm Jen. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Hi. Jen. Hi. So, give us a down. Yeah, of course you can. So, what makes a woman in her late 40s want a boob job? Well, I've had five children, um, and they're just a bit saggy. And I like them firm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just want them firming up. I call mine, like, deflated balloons. And right. I want them pumping up. Yeah, mine like two tatty tea bags after they've been dunked. <laughs> you know, pyramid bags. You dunk them, they come out. That's what mine like a bit. Are you going bigger? Yes. How much bigger? I'm not telling anybody. Are you not telling? I, he doesn't even know. You don't mind me asking how much is it cost him? It's costing me four thousand, nearly four thousand eight hundred pound. Are you actually nervous about the operation? And... No, no, no. I've gone into it, um, found out as much as I could. I've watched all, every programme that there is, I think, on, on breast implants and reconstructions and that. And I think they're mega clever. Yeah. Um, so you're so just... So I, I, I really haven't got a problem at all. With so you're behind Joe because it's what she wants is going to make her happy. Definitely, He's supported me all the way, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I've also watched the cosmetic surgery programmes on the TV, but I wondered if watching it for real would put me off for good. <laughs> Well, I've just got my scrubs on, and I'm going to go in and watch Joe's breast um, implants operation. And I'm really nervous because I'm not I'm very squeamish, so I'm a bit scared I might pass out. So if I do, don't laugh.
signs, but can't remember. Okay. Yeah. So, I'm not much out. It's a common problem. It's a It's okay from here because it doesn't really look that real. Um, I can't see the skin being cut, but the smell, I can smell like the burning flesh of the cutting away. And it's a little bit weird, but I'm still stood up. <laughs> I was fine until I went around the other side and saw the incision of of the oh, the hole. Just made me to my stomach. It's not. I'm not got a very strong stomach for things like that. The um, the smell of like the if, of the burning flesh as it was being cut away. It, it it was not very nice. It was a bit weird actually. It's, bit, it's like a smell you're not really meant to smell in your lifetime. You know, it's it's pretty hardcore. You know, it's 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 a serious surgery that you know you're being put to sleep for. You know, for vanity reasons, but I mean, who's to say after I've had kids, I won't do the same thing, you know? So, you know, you can't knock anybody for it, but I wouldn't like to see it again. It scared me a bit. Jo's delighted with her new look, the biggest her surge would let her go to, and no more sagging. I've seen what women are willing to go through for perfect boobs, and I'm quite sure that papers and magazines parading perfect images of breasts are just feeding that desire. I've got a naughty chuck up my sleeve for an old friend. Right, Jens, it's time to turn the tables. What? You are going to see what it's like to have some boobs. And what? I'm going to do a little photo shoot, and you're going to be the model. Come on, be a good sport. Get your top off. <laughs> Top off, come on, I love the off. camera. You're going to put boobs on me? Yes. What's this for then? To see what, see if you can feel what it's like to have boobs with the other side I of the am, camera. I am, whatever, go on then. <laughs> oh, chest hair, this might hurt. What? <laughs> <laughs> might what? No, it won't hurt at all, it's going to okay. be um, painless. Okay. Painless, I promise. Right. Why didn't anyone tell me about this? Because, look up as it's going to go wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's too big for my frame, eh? No, the perfect. Right, hold there for a few seconds. Man, I like that. <laughs> Where's my camera? You're gonna have to wear a bra. You think? Yeah. <laughs> Anyone got a bra? Just so happens I brought one in your size. Did you? <laughs> How do you know my size? <laughs> this size is silly sausage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ashley's 32 double H boobs weighed a stone. How will a man cope with the extra weight? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> You're feeling a little bit off balance? Yeah, a little bit. How does it feel on you? Having feet, having boobs? I don't know. <laughs> Have a little dance? A dance. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. yeah check my boobs, man. Look at them, they really work. <laughs> I like a little bit of hair there as well. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> realistic. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Right, I think it's start the shoot. <laughs> right, make up and someone do my hair. So how does Jens feel about the attention breasts bring? Don't you on all fours, please, and crawl. How are you pushing it, by the way? I think we've humiliated him enough. Leave him alone. Well done, you. You're a good sport. <laughs> Back at the body casting studio, Ken's keen to get his hands on my boobs, but I'm still reluctant to get my cast done. Right, here we go. This is going to be cold. Sexy. I've bottled it for now, but there's someone else at the front of the queue. Oh, <laughs> so, Ken, what's going to your mind when you're, when you're casting all these beautiful women's boobs? Spain. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, go from my mind. All I see at this time is the end product. Yeah. I really do. I see it as like statuettes, really. Sexy. So, most of the women that come here to get the cast done, is it like a, a, they conflict about the boobs? They want to sort of, they're proud of what they've got, they want to sort of keep it 
or remember what it looked like in case it changes soon. Many times we have women that have the implant, they're so proud, they're like little flowers when they've got small busts and um, they open up when they've had an implant, it's, uh, but they come afterwards and they're so proud of them. No, I'm still not ready yet to reveal all. Looking back, I think like lots of women, my insecurity started as a teenager, a time of bras and boys. When did you get your first bra? Well, I actually um, was very, very, very flat-chested till I was about 16, so I didn't really wear a bra, but we went to my friend's house when we were about 14, and uh, she had about three bras, but they didn't have a bra. Uh, small enough for me, so I wore a suspender belt <laughs> upside down oh. for my bra, because I was very thin then. Mm. I could do that now. I had it the opposite way around, because I had bigger boobs when I was about 14 when I first started Did wearing you? a bra. Yes, and then they just shrunk. I think it was from losing weight, but yeah, they just, you know, I'm getting fat. older, losing poppy fat, and I just lost all my boobs. <laughs> so have any of your early experiences changed the way that you feel about your boobs now, or...? Well, I remember I went to school with a bra, and, you know, you have a see-through shirt, the summer shirt, and someone went, ah, and pinged my brows to this boy. And went, as if you need a bra, you're flat-chested, pigeon chest, pigeon chest. Oh. And then now I think, hmm, well, I hope you're watching. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, I think that that age is really important into how, as to how you're going to be about mm, yourself. Yeah. And I mean, I remember a boy that I was next to, I had no, I, you know, I was just starting to, to develop, and he bent over and grabbed one oh, of my... No non-existent breasts. For me, <laughs> I found it so violating. I was completely shocked. And I'm sure for, for a good few years afterwards, that's part of the reason that I was like, I don't want boobs, I don't want boobs. Because it was just a, quite a violating experience. If you want to contact that guy, you can contact me a strange way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really remember going to get my first bra. Do you remember? Because you were never a big... So girl. when you did get me a bra, <laughs> you got me one just to feel sorry for me. <laughs> no, it was like a sports bra, wasn't it? More of a sports bra you had to... to... Because you were very athletic. And you need, you know, what, what little bit you had. You needed to be kept in check. <laughs> I was basically, I got a bra because everyone else had bras. Basically, yeah. 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 I didn't ever actually need one. <laughs> I've just got this mental picture of you in that netball tabard. In the park. Um, you know, you had the, the green tabard for the netball yeah. team. <laughs> and it'd be flapping about in the wind. <laughs> Everybody else's was like, fair. was fair. <laughs> it'd be flapping around everywhere. When years ago, when I thought I didn't want to actually have a boob mm. job, I think I'm so glad I didn't do it because there's been so many clothes. I mean, like, you can wear that you don't have to wear the bra, whether you can just, because of the small, smaller boobs do have the benefits. But when I have kids, if they do start to go south, I'll get them lifted. I won't get anything put in, I'll just get them. If they go down any further, I'll get them lifted up. Why? Because I don't want boobs down my knees. No, I, I, I think there's too much emphasis put on the actual breast. Although I'm still not totally confident about my boobs, I've come to a decision. Well, I've just popped out, Ella's drying in there, and I'm... On the way down here, I was so dubious about getting the whole thing done. But now I've come and I've seen um, how lovely Ken and Jenny are and what beautiful work they do, and think I'm going to go for it and have it done. I would never thought I'd get my boob cast on telly, but I'm just having one done. And you're not going to see my boob. Not at all. <laughs> not liking my boobs is one thing, but breastfeeding, now that makes me squeamish. Could this be something I've picked up from my mum? I breastfed you for seven weeks, and you were, you were difficult. You were. I mean, you eat anything now, I know, but you, were, you just weren't, you weren't very good then. And I, I didn't enjoy it. I didn't like it. Uh, but that's, uh, that is a personal taste. I don't, I, I don't like see it. the. I'll try it, but I don't think I like it. it it's fashion. Again, everything comes down to someone. Someone somewhere decides. Right. Well, it's this is what we've got to do. The benefits, obviously, you're getting all my antibodies and all this business, which, which do help. So even seven weeks helped. There shouldn't be the pressure. Um, I think some people are pressured because they're made to feel guilty if they don't. Mm. They're made to feel as if um, you don't bond with your child, you don't do this. And it's nothing. I'm, not just, I'm just not sure if I fancy the idea I, I, of having a little body well, attached so to you, 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 you feed on demand. Off. My being squeamish is personal, but what's going on when a woman gets told off by the police for breastfeeding on a public bench? 
So, this is the offending bench, or the bench that you offended. Uh -huh. Tell me what happened. What happened was, we came out of the post office and Eve was crying, so I decided then to give her a quick feed because it was a mile and a half from home. So we came to this bench to me, you know, you're not harming anybody. It's quite private. You've got your backs to the road. Yes. Not that you need to. But... Yes. And we had the buggy here and we had an umbrella off the buggy. So when I had her down here, it was shielded. So we quickly fed for five to ten minutes. And then I just started to head towards home. And a police car went by and an officer jumped out of the passenger side. And he said, excuse me, I need to have a word with you. We've had a complaint from a member of the public um, stating that you were, you know, breastfeeding on the public bench. And he just went on to state that um, if I could refrain from doing it in the future. <gasps> so as he was talking, I, I butted in. I said, no, hold on a minute. I haven't committed a crime. And he says, yes, I know that. Therefore, yes, I can't do you. No crime to be committed. However, could I suggest? And that's where he went on, like a restaurant or a cafe or something of that nature. Margaret made the news because it was a policeman who told her off, but many share his view and aren't keen to see breastfeeding on our streets. A National Childbirth Trust survey last year found that 63% of women have had rude or unpleasant comments from people for breastfeeding in public. After her running with the police, Margaret retreated to a breastfeeding cafe in Norwich, one of many in the country. I'm wondering if coming here will change my own attitudes towards breastfeeding. Hi, I'm Jenny. Happy, how are you doing? Very good, thank you. This is set up like a cafe so that women feel confident about socialising instead of feeling they have to stay at home um, and be out of society because they're breastfeeding. And most women who come here then have the confidence to go to any cafe and, and that's what's been happening. So what are the benefits of actually breastfeeding? Babies that are breastfed, there are major health benefits like um, exclusive breastfeeding prevents eczema and uh, gastroenteritis. Children are less likely to be admitted to hospital um, because they've been breastfed. There's a reduction in the incidence of, of childhood obesity because fat cells are laid down differently than they are with formula milk. And also, breastfeeding offers some protection against breast cancer, but many would still prefer it was done in private. I mean, it's still a big taboo, though, isn't it? I mean, in public places, people still are sort of a bit like, they don't quite know where to look. You probably look around the room, you probably don't see any breasts on the table. You'll see babies at the breast, but you yeah. don't see any exposure, um, which is, is a thing I think that society's worried about. They're sexualising the breast instead of seeing what the, you know, understanding that, that, what the breasts are for. It was something I always wanted to do because my mum had no help to breastfeed me and I ended up with dairy allergies because of it. Personally, I thought it would be the best thing for Eve if I breastfed and, you know, that I would be giving her the best. So that's just my own personal opinion. What do you think your attitudes prior to coming here today about breastfeeding are or where? Um, I think I've... You know, I've, I've got no problem being breastfeeding in public or anything like that. I've never sort of looked... I've frowned upon it at all. But um, I think it's sometimes I'm a bit freaked out when I see people breastfeeding bigger children. That right. freaks me out a bit. But, I mean, coming somewhere like this and seeing all the mums and interacting with each other, I think it's really, really cool. And I think I'd definitely have a go at breastfeeding. I'd have, have a go. I think after today I have learned to love my boobs a little bit more because, you know, they're not just things that get in the way or things that are used of a sexual nature. They're, um, you know, it's all what a beautiful thing they can, they can be for me breastfeeding a child. It was, it was a really, really nice day today and, and it was a beautiful atmosphere there. So I think I do love my boobs a little bit more. Back at Ken's studio, I'm actually going to go ahead and have my boobs cast. Ah! Okay, let's do this. Nice and cold for you. It's not too bad. I feel it dripping down. It feels weird. It's quite yeah. nice, though. Just keep very still now. Your hair's fine, it's well away from... Oh, don't worry. Feel it dripping. Gently, eh? You've got a shrimp. Yeah. There's a lot of hair in I'm not... I don't feel embarrassed. Um, not at all with, with Ken and Jenny, because it made me feel really comfortable. It can be a Valentine's Day present for dogs. Exactly. When yeah. I'm away from home, we'll have a boob to play yeah. with. Right, here we go, we just let over. Well done, darling. There it is. And there you are, inside out. <laughs> Right, that's the mould done. Now an agonising wait before you, or maybe just I, see the final cast. 
I'm getting a little bit more comfortable about my boobs, so now it's time for some serious home truths. Growing up, I was always jealous of your boobs, especially when we used to go when we started going clubbing together. <laughs> when we started going clubbing together, I used to wear like all these little little tops with, and at the time it was when there was like uh, the lycra that were all tied around the back room fashion. Then were the days, and um, mine was just like two jelly tots and an ironing board, and you'd come out and it was like good no. I was just felt so inferior. You saying that I dress like a slut? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you both dress like a slut. <laughs> so, Pat, do you, are you happy with your boobs? Not today. Not today. Not today. No. Right now. No. Not right now. No. <laughs> at, wow. at this age, I oh. don't know because they're probably going south. Oh, I thought you meant not today, but it might be tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting bigger. I, you know, you feel not as attractive with them. No. Mm. No. So no. <laughs> Mum, are you happy with your boobs? Not really. I'd like them smaller. Dad likes your boobs now. That's what I said to before. She went, no, your dad's a leg man. What about bra sizes? How often do you get your bras, your, your breasts measured? Never. I've never uh, tried a bra on before I bought it. Oh, I have now. I, I do now. It was before the wedding and I went to three separate oh, places. And, and um, I was measured between 38C in one place 36D in another and a 34 double D in another. And these were all qualified bra fitting places. <laughs> so you never got, you don't even try them on before you buy them. Well, how you, do you should, because you drive me mad sometimes. You, because your bras, you the see that side. thing sometimes from the side, and I feel like going, and your mum, what size are you? I'm 36C. But mum, you're not. <laughs> because we have like the D and the E sticking out the top. <laughs> So our bra size, I'm going to find out how wrong we've got it. So off to a leading bra fitter who's helped thousands of women get it right, including the Queen. So maybe she can bring the royal touch to my jelly tots. 85% of women are wearing the wrong size bra. As many as that? Absolutely. Today you're going to be fitting some women for, for bra sizes. What do you right. expect to find? I will probably find that... that um, the person that I'm fitting is wearing a bra that is too big around the back. And so what's happening is they're getting the cup fitting by, where, say, wearing 36C or 36D, where they probably might even be a 32 around the back and double D or an E. I've invited some lucky ladies to join me to be fitted by June. June doesn't use a tape measure to fit her clients. Apparently, she can just tell by looking. So, Yvonne, you're going to have a bra fitting today. Um, what bra size do you think you are? I think I'm a 34F. <laughs> So, what are our results? So what I've done is she's, 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 uh, she's been wearing 34F. Yeah. But um, I've, I've put her in, in 32 double F. Gone down a back size yeah, and upper right. cut fitting. What size do you think you are? I think I'm a 36F. So, what are the results? Well, actually, I'm a 38F. 38F. <laughs> Come on, let's see what size oh. you are. Come on! Well, I'm convinced I'm a 34B. That's what I think I've been for the past zillion years. Well, I, think, me I, th I think we're going to have a look. OK. Are cool. you ready? Oh. Don't let me be an A cup. <laughs> so what size is this I'm trying? I'm not discussing size until oh, we've no. got it on. Let's... Have another go. Let's have a go. Jenny, will you show us your bra? No, I will not show you my bra. I feel like a nudie Rudy. Even though you're tiny, we want you to grab what you've got and bring it to the front. You've got enough. You've got nice little bosoms. You're wearing strapless. That's miles too big round. <laughs> You know, somebody else can get in the back with you. <laughs> I could be filming with you next week and you, you wouldn't even know I was there. <laughs> right, so... I this fitted. See, I mean, this is... Jenny, this is not padding. This is what she's grown herself. All by herself. And look at that. She looks bigger than, than, than she did. And this is a 30C. And you were wearing 34B... Well, is it any wonder that uh, they were so big round the back? 
Well, that does feel a lot more comfortable, actually. Well, because you won't have to keep on moving yourself and bringing, pulling yourself down. Yeah, as long as the bug in the Put your arms in the air. Look down, go down and touch your toes. Oh! Completely not moved at all. Well, you shouldn't move. Well, I'm made up of my C cup. That's made my year. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you're not a teacup anymore, you're a C cup. I'm quite amazed that I'm in a C cup because I thought, I'm going to come here, she's going to tell me in a makeup because I always thought it was a dirty full big and I thought June was going to say, actually, you're an A, minus. But um, I'm a C cup, which is quite bizarre because it's quite deceiving how the sizes work. I mean, I just automatically presume a C cup is someone with big boobs and so on and so forth and it's, it's not always the case, so it's quite deceiving. <laughs> As far as who, who was wearing the worst bra, none of them were brilliant, but Jenny, when you spoke to her, was reorganising herself all day, pulling herself, pulling it down, because it was much too big round the back. So every time she spoke, she was, she, you could see she was, she was coming out underneath. And so it was a great... Um, it really reformed her when we realised that she needed a much smaller back because she's got she's got lovely bosoms and uh, we wanted to make the most of them. The best thing about the media's fascination with my boobs is it allows me to exploit it to raise money for breast cancer. But are me and my mates checking our own boobs enough? Press and media attention around breast cancer at the moment, has it made you more aware of checking your own boobs? I've started to re not be paranoid, but yeah, I definitely check my boobs all the time, like once a week. Because you've got to get it so early now, haven't yeah. you? So yeah. And yeah? No, yeah, I do as well. But do you? I, no, I'm completely <laughs> well, I don't think I would as much as if I had huge boobs. Because <laughs> I know that's wrong perception to have, obviously, but they're not in my life that much. I don't really... I'm not as conscious of my boobs, I don't think. Mm. So I, Whereas I, as soon really as I get not... home, take my bra off, it's like a big thing, my boobs, really. <laughs> I know what Annie means, though. It, sound, it does sound silly when, when you hear out loud, but because my boobs aren't sort of out there, you don't think to, as much as, you know... Mm. I do check my breasts and I check them quite regularly, but not as much as I probably should. The majority of women with breast cancer are over the age of 50. I'm going to meet Mary Ann, who was diagnosed at the age of 51. Four out of five of her sisters have also had it. It's been a long, painful journey for mary -Ann. Both her breasts were removed and reconstructed, and three years later on, she had nipple reconstruction. But now it's a special moment, a kind of end point for her. A tiny thing, but hugely significant. Nipples with colour. Is it hurting at all? No, it's a weird sensation, and I can only say I'm quite enjoying it. <laughs> Go, girl! <laughs> yeah, because, because there's no, not a lot of feeling there, and it is sending sort of funny sensations. So. It is quite it's similar to... Nice. It looks like a tattoo, almost, or the, the same sort of procedure-ish as a tattoo. It's the only thing I can sort of relate it to. Yeah. But it's amazing how quick it is as well. Mm, all I can see is a mo nipple. <laughs> what made you have... Uh, obviously, you have the breast reconstruction and then the, um, the actual nipple put on, but the areola, which I always say wrong. What does it mean to you to have that actually done now, this, this procedure? Well, it, it really finishes it off. It's the icing on the cake, definitely. Um, and, you know, when I wear little T-shirts, it shows through. And, 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 and I'm normal. I'm, I'm back to as I was before. Yeah. Have a nipple and, 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 you know, it's just all there. And I've been put back together, and that's what's so important. That's so important. For a woman, it is very yeah, important, isn't it? Although I've never felt less than a woman. And to have something there, it's just wonderful. I, I've got a shape of a woman, you know, and um, well, they're, they're not perfect, but they're mine. <laughs> they're mine again. I think they're not far off. Mm. And I did have very big ones, 38 double D, so... Oh, uh, rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> Even simple things like going on holiday and being able to wear a bikini or a bathing costume and seeing that shadow of colour underneath, through to just standing naked and looking at themselves in a mirror and seeing again the illusion of, of two nipples where there would have just been a breast mound alter alternatively. By the time my ladies get to this stage, they've been to hell and back. Um, and this is the end of a, of a very, very difficult time for them. This, this restores some sense of pre-op normality. But the way 
wake-up call for me and thousands of other young women was Kylie getting breast cancer last year at the age of just 37. Although it is less common in young women, it does happen. Rachel Blake was 31 when she got cancer. She had all of her right breast removed and lived with just one breast for four years. Basically, I was on a roller coaster. Sort of the minute I got diagnosed, I was I was in shock, and I was almost begging the surgeon, "Do you have to take my breast? Can you not do a lumpectomy?" And his answer was, "No, the tumour is too big." Okay, well, basically, you can see the my mastectomy scar there, and mm -hmm. you can see how concave my chest is because not only have they taken my breast tissue, but they've taken my chest muscle that side as well. Did you feel unbalanced? Yeah, yeah, you do. You do, you don't realise, but you do. Um, and that was so tender. Every time I touched it, I felt physically sick. Because of the pain? Because of the, the feeling. I can't describe to you the feeling um, of what weird sensation it was. It was literally like... The only way I can describe it is touching the inside of your ribs. To look and feel more confident, Rachel wore prosthetics in place of her breast. And I had basically a stick-on version, which had a sticky back. So basically you take that off and that's a sticky back one. Oh, I don't like that. No, it's, it's not pleasant and you can imagine where my skin was really sensitive. I'd put that on, but when I went to take it off, it was awful. How long did you have to wear this for? Well, I could only actually wear that for a maximum of about a day because it would irritate my skin. When you had the one breast, were you conscious all the time? Yeah, I mean, you're permanently paranoid that nobody's going to be able to accept you for the, for the way you are. Um, that, you know, you'll be rejected. It's, it's such an obvious emotion for people that are one-breasted or I suppose for anybody that's got some deformity, whatever you want to... I mean, I, I looked at it, I suppose, as a deformity and, that, and I shouldn't have done. Rachel met her partner Becky just six months after her right breast was removed. I think Rachel, understandably, was quite paranoid. Um, you know, any new partner, any new relationship... Um, so she was really honest from the start and told me straight away. I think perhaps Rachel thought I'd be scared off and mm. perhaps best to sort of get in there first kind of attitude. I can say hand on my heart, it never, never to me was an issue. My genuine concern was that I would make Rachel feel uncomfortable. And I actually, I, you know, I actually, when we first, you know, got to that point, I actually said, you know, are you OK to take your top off? Do you want to take your top off? And Rachel said yes. So yeah. you were worried about making you feel uncomfortable the other way, vice yeah. versa? Yeah, you, sort of I don't think you wanted me, me... You didn't want mm. me to put up, be put off, which mm. I knew I wouldn't, but Rachel's not inside my head. Now that Rachel's had a breast reconstruction, she knows what it feels like to have her body back again. And for Becky, Rachel's a different woman. How do you feel about Rachel's boobs now? Brilliant. <laughs> pure, pure, pure personal <laughs> reasons. They look fantastic, you know. And they are very attractive, but more what was more noticeable for me is when Rachel had it done, subconsciously I think something must have changed inside. You must feel more sort of womanly is the only way to put it because you sort of exuded. I think my confidence had come back. Yeah, you exuded. Without me even knowing it. So you felt whole. Yeah. Yeah. Rachel is, you know, she's she's amazing. And seeing what she's been through and her spirit and what she's gone through, I mean, four years of, of living with one breast and it was, no, it was hard for her. Every day it was hard for her. And now she's come through it, she's smiling and, you know, it, it just makes you think, boom, to yourself, you know, for, for moaning about my boobs not looking nice in this top or, you know, it's like you've got to learn to live with what you've got and love what you've got and, you know, don't take, don't take things for granted. Life, don't take life for granted. Talking to Rachel and others made me realise exactly how much our breasts affect our confidence, our sense of femininity and our sexual relationships. of my journey and it's brought me here to New York to meet a photographer whose latest project is to take photographs of women going about their business bare-breasted. New York is the one state in America where women can bear their breasts legally in public. You never know, perhaps it'll rub off on me. You're right. I don't know. 
It was great. I thought I was going to be nervous, and I wasn't. It wasn't so bad. But liberated and I free. I feel liberated and free. Did you decide to do this? Um, well, men walk around with their tops off all the time. Why not women? Do it on the beach. Why not in the middle of New York City? <laughs> in two years, photographer Jordan Matter has photographed hundreds of women on the Big Apple streets. What made you start this project? Uh, well, initially it was inspired by uh, the hysteria that surrounded the Janet Jackson wardrobe malfunction. Oh, the nipple and so, gate. Well, nipple gate, right, yeah. And uh, we were led to believe in this country that uh, the entire nation was outraged. And uh, simultaneously, I found out that it's legal for women to be top free in New York State. So I started photographing women top free in all of New York City. How was it? Were you cold? I was fine until this big gust of wind came along and all of a sudden, whoa! <laughs> so why did you decide to get involved in this Oh, uh, because I was raised European and to me they're just breasts. It's, you know, if I didn't have my breasts I couldn't feed my children. So I don't look at them as pornography, as sexual. They're just breasts. Okay. I thought, okay, people from all over the country come to visit us here. And so let's see their reaction to these naked breasts. And in essence, what I found out was nobody really cared. That this hysteria was all generated by what I think is an increasingly conservative minority of people in this country. They kind of feel that women should not have the same rights and be able to express themselves in the same way as men. And I'm just kind of addressing that. If I took my shirt off and walked down the street, nobody would care. If you took yours off and walked down the street, people would get outraged. And as you'll see today, people do. Basically, the shot I want is I just want the two of you standing there like you're about to cross the street. Okay, I'm going to go over there. I'm going to be up there. I'll give you a thumbs up when it's time to take your clothes off. Baby, here I go. Yeah. This is totally legal, you know this. I've just said that, so she said can... it's totally legal to film. And I it's totally legal to be it's topless. It's totally legal to be topless. I have the documentation you, if you'd like I'm to see it. I'm telling you what I'm allowed to write you up for. Which is what? You can, you, I can write you guys up for that. For what? Topless. There are kids everywhere. You're in Times Square. Officer, You're not just, allowed to. Just out of curiosity, what specifically, can, what would be the charge that you'd write up? I'm not going to look it up for you right now. I'm just telling you what my job is, all right? Well, but your job, I, I don't mean disrespect, your job is to enforce the law and it's law. So I can't technically write you. But people keep coming up to me and telling me it's not right. But it's legal, so it's actually nothing to do with you. But you know, we got screamed at by one of your uh, one of your co workers. She was a, a female officer. She, she got mad at me. Oh, did she? Yeah. What was the purpose of it? It's, it's like... for an art project. Basically, they want to show you boobs. What do you think? Boobs in Times Square. They're nice, right? I don't mind. So the female police officer wanted to arrest us, and the male officer said, nice shot. <laughs> I was thinking maybe, you know, like in solidarity, perhaps the two of you would like to participate in the shot together. Oh, come on, you're You've got come on, friends. <laughs> You've got one chance and that's no chance. <laughs> okay. Can you do it? Yeah. 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 Before I actually came here and met you today, I did uh, think that it was going to be all sort of like, you know, like women with perfect boobs stuff. And you know, you just normal natural women exactly. in a natural environment absolutely anybody that wants to do it and i embrace it and encourage it and i try to stay away from perfect body women because i think it's much easier to say well that's objectifying them or it's easy to say of course they they would do it why wouldn't they care the, the, the thing is is that if you see a woman whose body is not classically perfect and she's topless in public and she's fine with it mm. it might make other women who might have that same type of body address their issues with themselves and yeah. say, well, wait a minute, if she's comfortable, why am I not more comfortable with myself? Kim, what are you working with? Right? So why did you get involved in this sort of shoot with him? As a woman, of course. I think that it's important that we have rights, too, and I think that it's fair. We can go out without shirts on. I'm very comfortable with it. I'm not uncomfortable with my body, and I'm not uncomfortable with nudity in general. And I think that this project is very important to get out there for women, so we can be more comfortable with ourselves. I generally get a lot of people that either in enjoy it and re respond with enthusiasm and encouragement to the women, or occasionally people that get very, very angry at me. And they're usually women. 
Yeah, is that your way? Oh, I'm sorry. Did you want to come in, Mike? Your body is sacred. It was made by God. Your body should be closed. Yeah. Not to be exposed. No, not to be exposed like that. Young people, you don't know anything about sin. There's a heaven and there's a hell. And you go depending on how you live your life. It's very immoral, very sinful. She's causing other people to sin. What's the point? What's Can't the you do something moral and good? I think... Personally, this is very moral and good. It gives no, women the same freedom. Do you, can I ask you this? Do you think it's immoral for a man to it, take his shirt off? It's immoral to dress in simple. <laughs> sin, S I. Do you think it's sinful for a man to take his shirt off? S I N. No. Okay. So I just think there's a disparity there. That's what I'm trying to address. I think we're ready. What do you think today? Well, I want to go out on a date with her. Oh. <laughs> so what do you think? Is it shocked you've seen somebody? I was very shocked, yeah, that she took her top off. I mean, you don't see anything like that in New York, you know, very often unless, you know, it's a inappropriate kind of situation. I love it. I think it's a one. I think it's great freedom. I like her. Well, they're going to be. You're, you guys are rocking the boat here. I hope I wasn't pushy, but earlier in the day, I was asking you whether or not you wanted to participate as well, right? And you absolutely said no. You just flat out no. I'm not going to do it for you. What was your sp specific reason? Because it's going on telly where I live. <laughs> and what? It, what's the concern about that? No, I mean, I just. I've got no problem going topless on holiday. You know. Um, I do sort of sexy men's mag shoots, you know, I've not got a problem, but, and it wouldn't be actually being out in the street, it's just that I wouldn't want it to be on TV at home where I live and all, like, I don't know, it's just, it just doesn't feel, it's not, I couldn't get my picture taken by you, that wouldn't bother me, in the street in New York where no one knows me really, uh -huh. that'd be cool, but the cameras, the BBC, because because then what would happen would be they'd show it at home and that could and then cause it'd be a stir. Frozen and put it on the tabloid papers and scrutinized and. I see, and that that and so 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 it's more about your career. It's more is it more of a career thing because you know it would become a a, a public thing as opposed to if you weren't in this line of work and you knew no tabloids. If I would wasn't do it. in this line of work, I wouldn't be bothered at all. I mean, I'd get them out really nilly. Imagine the BBC cameras were only filming you from behind. You see. See, I've thought about this, but also because I was going to suggest this earlier, but every shot we've done today, there's been so many people around with phone cameras, digital cameras. It just takes one of them to be British, and I'm screwed. <laughs> That's a good point. I don't really have a ready argument for that. <laughs> Statistically, what are my chances of talking you into doing that? Slim to non-existent. Slim? No, non-existent. Because <laughs> if you give me slim, no. I'm going to go with it. No, non-existent. Okay, so I'm going to stop then. Jordan's project that he's doing is great, you know, um, the fact that New York State is the only state that's, that's legal to go topless, so he's making a point, really, that, you know, how it's, it is petty, really, that there's other places it's illegal, so, you know, I think he's doing a good job. You know, he's using big women, small women, women who have, have you know, have had mastectomies, he's using all walks of life, so I think that's a really positive thing, so, you know, hopefully people will see what he's doing and, you know, sort of take note that, you know, Boobs are just boobs, they're not something that we should be like, oh, boobs! Or not that something we're going to burn in hell for showing. <laughs> I honestly think I have changed my attitude towards boobs because, you know, before it was, it was always like... Um, the way I saw my boobs were more like an accessory, you know, how they, how they looked in clothes, how they looked in this top or that dress. I think definitely I appreciate them more now, you know, for the whole... Um, breastfeeding thing to, to, you know, God forbid if I ever get ca breast cancer, you know, how much I would miss them if they weren't here, you know. I've been really, really inspired by some of the people I've met along the way, Mary Ann and Rachel especially, I mean, the, cu the courage that those women show and just the smiles on their faces, you know, they've been through so much, you know, they've lost a breast. Rachel will live without a breast for four years and, you know, just the smile on her face and... The fact that they wanted to take part in this show to, you know, to show other women that, you know, you can you can get on with your life, you can have a full life, you can have a great life, you know. Mary Ann was like, she loved her boobs so much. You know, she just wanted to show them all the time. And, you know, if if they can be like that after what they've been through and, you know, I've got two healthy boobs, I'm going to appreciate them and, and love them a little bit more. <laughs> I 
do feel a lot more relaxed now about my boobs and realise I'm lucky to be healthy as well. So here goes my last chance to reveal all in public. Hi guys, all right, so I've just collected my boob cast from Ken and Jenny and I'm not sure if I'm going to show you a lot yet, so I'm just going to have to look at it for the first time. It's quite exciting. No, you're not looking! <laughs> well, it's beautiful. Not my boob, the cast. But um, I don't want you to see because it really looks like my boob. Obviously. Um, Ken and Jenny did a really, really good job, but I don't want to show you. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. It really does look like my boob. See, so you're not seeing it. Bye. Sorry to disappoint you folks, but I just couldn't do it. Ma. So I spent. I spent. Ma. <laughs> Ma. Everybody stop, we're talking about boobs. You're really making me laugh. <laughs> Check it out. Sort of like, you know, like women with perfect boobs stuff. And you're not, you're just normal, natural women exactly. in natural environments. Absolutely, anybody that wants to do it. And I embrace it and encourage it. And I try to stay away from perfect body women because I think it's much easier to say, well, that's objectifying them. Or it's easy to say, of course they, they would do it. Why wouldn't they care? The, the, the thing is, is that if you see a woman whose body is not classically perfect and she's topless in public and she's fine with it, mm. it might make other women who might have that same type of body address their issues with themselves and yeah. say, well, wait a minute, if she's comfortable, why am I not more comfortable with myself? Kim, what are you working with? Right? Oh, right. So why did you get involved in this sort of shoot with him? As a woman, of course, I think that it's important that we have rights too, and I think that it's fair. We can go out without shirts on. I'm very comfortable with it. I'm not uncomfortable with my body, and I'm not uncomfortable with nudity in general. And I think that this project is very important to get out there for women so we can be more comfortable with ourselves. I generally get a lot of people that either in enjoy it and re respond with enthusiasm and encouragement to the women, or occasionally people that get very, very angry at me. And they're usually women. Yeah, is that your way? Oh, I'm sorry, did you want to come in there? Your body is sacred. It was made by God. Your body should it be is. closed. It's yeah. Not to be exposed. Doors. No, not to be exposed like that. Yeah. Young people, you don't know anything about sin. There's a heaven and there's a hell. And you go depending on how you live your life. It's very immoral, very sinful. She's causing other people to sin. What's the point? What's Can't the you do something moral and good? I think. Personally, this is very moral and good. It gives no, women the same freedom. Do you, can I ask you this? Do you think it's yeah. immoral for a man to it's, take his shirt off? It's immoral to dress in simple. <laughs> Sin, S I. -N. Do you think it's sinful for a man to take his shirt off? S I N. No. Okay. Very simple. So I just think there's a disparity there. That's what I'm trying to address. I think we're ready. What do you think today? Well, I want to go out on a date with her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? Has it shocked you? I was, seen I was very shocked, yeah, that she took her top off. I mean, you don't see anything like that in New York, you know, very often, unless, you know, it's a inappropriate kind of situation. I love it. I think it's a I think it's great freedom. I like her. Well, they're going to be, you guys are rocking the boat here. I hope I wasn't pushy, but earlier in the day, I was asking you whether or not you wanted to participate as well, right? And you absolutely said no. You just flat out, no, I'm not going to do it. For you, what was your sp specific reason? Because it's going on telly where I live. <laughs> and what it, what's the concern about that? No, I mean, I just, I've got no problem going topless on holiday, you know, um, I do sort of sexy men's mag but yeah. you don't see any exposure, um, which is is the thing I think that society's worried about. They're sexualising the breast instead of seeing what the you know understanding that the, what the breasts are for. It was something I always wanted to do because my mum had no help to breastfeed me, and I ended up with dairy allergies because of it. Personally, I thought it would be the best thing for Eve if I breastfed and. You know, that I would be giving her the best, so that's just my own personal opinion. What do you think your attitudes prior to coming here today about breastfeeding are aware? Um, I think I've... You know, I've, I've got no problem being breastfeeding in public or anything like that. I've never sort of looked, I've frowned upon it at all. But um, I think sometimes I'm a bit freaked out when I see people breastfeeding bigger children. 
that right. freaks me out a bit. But I mean, coming somewhere like this and seeing all the mums and interacting with each other, I think it's really, really cool. And I think I'd definitely have a go at breastfeeding. I'd have, have a go. I think after today, I have learned to love my boobs a little bit more because, you know, they're not just things that get in the way or things that are used of a sexual nature. They're, um, you know, it's all what a beautiful thing they can, they can be for me breastfeeding a child. It was, it was a really, really nice day today and, and it was a beautiful atmosphere there. So I think I do love my boobs a little bit more. Back at Ken's studio, I'm actually going to go ahead and have my boobs cast. Yeah. Okay, let's do this. I think that's some cold for you. It's not too bad. Feel it dripping down. It feels weird. It's quite yeah. nice though. Just keep very still now. Your hair's fine. It's well away from. Oh, don't worry. Feel it dripping down. You got a swim. I'm not. I don't feel embarrassed. Um, not at all with with Ken and Jenny because it made me feel really comfortable. It can be a Valentine's Day present for Don. Exactly. When I'm away from home, he'll have a boob to play yeah, with. Right, here we go. We just like over. Well done, Don. There it is. And there you are, inside out. Ah! Right, that's the mold done. Now an agonising wait before you, or maybe just I, see the final cast. I'm getting a little bit more comfortable about my boobs, so now it's time for some serious home truths. Growing up, I was always jealous of your boobs. Especially when we used to go when we started going clubbing together. <laughs> when we started going clubbing together, I used to wear like all these little little tops with, and at the time it was when those like uh, the lycra that were all tied around the back were in fashion. Then were the days, and um, mine was just like two jelly tots and an ironing board, and you'd come out and it was like good dong, and I was just felt so inferior. You're saying that I dress like a slut. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> No, you were just like a slut. <laughs> so, Pat, do you, are you happy with your boobs? Not today. Not today. Not today. No. Right now. No. Not right now. Well, I mean, you don't see anything like that in New York, you know, very often, unless, you know, it's a inappropriate kind of situation. I love it. I think it's a one. I think it's great freedom. I like her. Well, they're going to be. You guys are rocking the boat here. I hope I wasn't pushy, but earlier in the day, I was asking you whether or not you wanted to participate as well, right? You absolutely said no. You just flat out no. I'm not going to do it for you. What was your specific reason? Because he's going on telly where I live. <laughs> and what? It, what's the concern about that? No, I mean, I just. I've got no problem going topless on holiday. You know. Um, I do sort of sexy men's mag shoots, you know, I've not got a problem, but, and it wouldn't be actually being out in the street. It's just that I wouldn't want it to be on TV at home where I live and all, like, I don't know, it's just, it just doesn't feel, it's not, I couldn't get my picture taken by you, that wouldn't bother me. In the street in New York where no one knows me really. Uh -huh. That'd be cool, but the cameras, the BBC. Because because then what would happen would be they'd show it at home and that could and cause it'd be a stir. And then frozen and put it on and the tabloid papers and scrutinised and. I see, and that that and so 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 it's more about your career. It's more is it more of a career thing because you know it would become a a, a public thing as opposed to if you weren't in this line of work and you knew no tabloids. If I would wasn't do it. in this line of work, I wouldn't be bothered at all. I mean, I'd get them out really nilly. Imagine the BBC cameras were only filming you from behind. You see. See, I've thought about this, but also because I was going to suggest this earlier. But every shot we've done today, there's been so many people around with phone cameras, digital cameras. It just takes one of them to be British and I'm screwed. <laughs> That's a good point. I don't really have a ready argument for that. <laughs> Statistically, what are my chances of talking you into doing this? Slim to non-existent. Slim? No, non-existent. Because <laughs> if you give me slim, no. I'm going to go with it. No, non-existent. Okay, so I'm going to stop then. Jordan's project that he's doing is great, you know, um, the fact that New York State is the only state that it's, that it's legal to go topless, so he's making a point really that, you know, how it's, it is petty really that there's other places it's illegal, so, you know, I think he's doing a good job, you know, he's using big women, small women, women who have, have you know, have had mastectomies, he's using all walks of life, so I think that's a really positive thing, so, you know, hopefully people will see what he's doing and, you know, sort of take note that, you know, Boobs are just boobs, they're not something that we should be like, oh, boobs! Or not that something we're going to burn in hell for showing. <laughs> well, in the I honestly think I have changed my attitude towards boobs because, you know, before it was, it was always like, um, 
the way I saw my boobs were more like an accessory, you know, how they, how they looked in clothes, how they looked in this top or that dress. I think definitely I appreciate them more now, you know, for the whole... Um, breastfeeding thing. My height and so frame. Be big yeah, big, because I'm like sort of five foot tall, obviously, when I'm not pregnant, size six. Jane later swapped her D cups for E cups, and then a surgeon fitted her with a special implant with a built in pump, which took her to a gigantic double H. It's a bag that they actually fill with saline, which is salt water, with a little valve from under your armpit. They pump it up slowly. And then obviously as the swelling goes down, they can keep adding saline to the actual, you know, bag. So what my surgeon did was obviously exploit this to the extreme and we just kept adding like 50 mils at a time. Because I was young and just wanted the biggest boobs in Britain, <laughs> you know, it, for then it was like, just do it, I don't care, do you know what I mean? But I went up to a 32 double H and I probably could have still had some in then, but at that, at that... <laughs> I mean now, mm. and now I'm. I mean, you can you can say I've probably got an extra stone added to my body at like half a stone each. Literally, feel the weight. Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> like, so th there's like an extra stone like added. Have we done it? When Jane first had the implants done the very first time, were you, were you sort of dubious or against it or? I was definitely against it, definitely because I thought she was, as she were natural. She looked fine. I didn't think she needed to go any bigger. Being pregnant with all the extra weight on top is causing Jane real problems. Joking apart, my internal organs are literally like my stomach's crushed in between like the baby and the implants. It's discomfort and I have to sleep sitting up because otherwise I literally like with a weight that's pushing up on my lungs and the breast pressing down, mm -hmm. it makes me when I'm asleep very breathless. Like now, probably once I've had this baby, I probably will go smaller because just things like family holidays, Johnny, are like difficult or going swimming. It's just hard, you know, being stared at for I was by the swimming pool on holiday and you come out, I'll be for you, man. I'll be like that. that. Oh. But I want a size that's going to be where I can just... Natural. Yeah, like, what could be natural, where I can yeah, go to a shop, natural. not have, like, people tripping over dustbins that are, like, stuck to the floor and falling into the trees and that. <laughs> if only. But really, close up, Jane's boobs are rather extreme. I'm certainly not keen on mine being as big as hers, but me and my mates from my old band Precious have tried every trick in the book, bar surgery, to enhance our cleavages. I think over the years, me and Annie, I think we've shoved all things from socks, <laughs> yeah. sneakers. Oi, that's a secret. <laughs> we've put an array of, array of various Lots things of down Lots of various things down bras in order to kind of pad out very gorgeous outfit. I remember the Brits. <laughs> yes, it was. it was a very drunk night out, but um, it was Jenny's great idea to stuff my top with um, <laughs> a woman's product. A woman's shall we product, say. <laughs> which uh, worked very well. It was good because you stuck them on. Didn't you? Like you can wear that. You don't have to wear the bra. Where you can just because of the small, smaller boobs do have the benefits. But when I have kids, if they do start to go south, I'll get them lifted. I won't get anything put in. I'll just get them. If they go down any further. I'll get them lifted up. Why? Because I don't want boobs down my knees. No, I, I, I think there's too much emphasis put on the actual breast. Although I'm still not totally confident about my boobs, I've come to a decision. Well, I've just popped out, Ella's drying in there, and I'm... On the way down here, I was so dubious about getting the whole thing done. But now I've come, I've seen um, how lovely Ken and Jenny are and what beautiful work they do. I think I'm going to go for it and have it done. I would never thought I'd get my boob cast on telly, but I'm just having one done. And you're not going to see my boob. Not at all. <laughs> not liking my boobs is one thing, but breastfeeding, now that makes me squeamish. Could this be something I've picked up from my mum? I breastfed you for seven weeks and you were, you were difficult. You were, I mean, you'll eat anything now, I know, but you, were, you just weren't, you weren't very good then. And I, I didn't enjoy it, I didn't like it. Uh, but that's, uh, that is a personal taste. I don't, I, think I I'd don't like see it. the. I'll try it, but I don't think I'd like it. it it's fashion, again, everything come down to someone, someone somewhere decides, right, well, it's, this is what we've got to do. The benefits, obviously, you're getting all my antibodies and all this business, which, which do help. So even seven weeks helped. There shouldn't be the pressure. Um, I think some people are pressured because they're made to feel guilty if they don't. 
mm. it's made you feel as if um, you don't bond with your child, you don't do this. And it's nothing. I'm, not just, I'm just not sure if I fancy the idea I, of having a little body well, attached so you, 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 you feed on demand. Off. Might be squeamish is personal, but what's going on when a woman gets told off by the police of breastfeeding on a public bench? So, this is the offending bench, or the bench that you offended. Uh -huh. Tell me what happened. What happened was, we came out of the post office and Eve was crying, so I decided then to give her a quick feed because it was a mile and a half from home. So we came to this bench to me, you know, you're not harming anybody. It's private. You've got your back to the road. Yes. Not that you need to. But... Yes. And we had the buggy here and we had an umbrella off the buggy. So when I had her down here, it was shielded. So we quickly fed for five to ten minutes. And then I just started to head towards home. And a police car went by and an officer jumped out of the passenger side. And he said, excuse me, I need to have a word with you. We've had a complaint from a member of the public um, stating that you were, you know, breastfeeding on the public bench. And he just went on to state that um, if I could refrain from doing it in the future. <gasps> so as he was talking, I, I butted in. I said, no, hold on a minute. I haven't committed a crime. And he says, yes, I know that. Therefore, yes, I can't do, you know, crime to be committed. Everywhere I look, all I see is women flaunting their perfect boobs. And they just seem to be getting bigger and bigger and perter and firmer. There's just so much pressure to have the perfect pair. It's funny how a man only thinks about the... You got a real big heart. But I'm looking at you, you got real big brains, but I'm looking at you, girl, it ain't no yeah, that's it. looking at you. Big boobs make the lads' mags and tabloids loads of cash. If you're famous but less well endowed, there's someone out there who can fix it. Photographer Jens Wilkem knows just how to do it. Hello. Hi. Hi, I'm Jenny. Jens. Nice, nice to meet you. you. I've done some um, shoots for the lads' mags like FHM, Maximum Arena. And when I've done the shoots, like, um, you look at the Polaroids and like they look nice with the lights and the makeup and everything, but then you see the pictures back and they look amazing because they airbrush you beyond an inch of your life, which is good because I don't mind that. No, you're like, oh, God, I've got big <laughs> boobs and long legs. It's great. Is it fair that it gives sort of false, you know, for all the young girls out there to look in and thinking, oh, I want to look like that? It's, it's, you know, it's not realistic, really, is it? No, it's not realistic. Of course, it's a little bit unfair, but that's the game. But you're selling you know. for men, so you're not really that Exactly, bothered, exactly. With the men's magazines, lads' mags, how do they want women's boobs to look? Is it big, small, fake, natural? And what's your preference? OK, I'll start with my preference. Okay. I definitely prefer natural. Mm -hmm. In the industry that I'm in, I'm a photographer, sometimes a fake boob can be more... You can take more photos with the boob looking nice because, yeah. you know, of all the poses, lying down, crawling, they all look good if you have fake yeah. boobs because they're just stuck on. So I've heard you're a bit of a whiz with the airbrush. How often does, I mean, do all shots get airbrushed? It depends on the girl. Um, if there are, there are times when the girl is just perfect, but not very often. There's always, very a, bit often. Of, there's always a bit of retouching. So how does he boost the cleavage? So if I want this to be a little bit bigger, I just Sorry. make it a little bit bigger. Just the cup size bigger in a, in a couple of seconds. And what you do after that, you slim the arms down a little bit, giving the, gives the impression that the boobs are even bigger if you're into big boobs, which men's magazines usually are. Pull the stomach in a bit, and then we can have a little before and after, I'll show you. Girls like their hair big, big of course, also, so let's make the hair a little bit bigger. OK. Now you can see before and after. Just in a couple of seconds. If anyone knows my insecurities about my boobs, it's my mum. She supported me from when I started as a model at the age of 16 to when I joined my first girl band, Precious, at 21. Say the words I heard you and we've often been bemused with how much I've been airbrushed. But, I mean, some of these magazines, though, I mean, for example, this one, this was years ago. Hello! Hello. I am Jen. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right. This is George. Hello, George. <laughs> oh, he's Vikings. Come in. <laughs> She's invited me and my dog, George Michael, round for dinner with her mum and one of her mates. He's allowed on the car. After 12 years, Ashley has retired from glamour modelling and is back to being Jane again. Unfortunately for her, she can't retire her boobs quite so easily. Now, four and a half months pregnant with her second child, something surprising is happening to Jane. She's already started to leak milk. Obviously, with me having the implant on the inside, um, that tends to do what a baby's head does on the outside, so it stimulates it from really early on, So, which is why, like, now I'm four and a half months, but I'm still leaking all over. 
What, so, so because the implants you, you yeah earlier. because yeah because mine are so extreme it's you know the pressure they've said that's why I leak early the pressure of those sort of rubbing it's doing like a stimulating effect which is what okay. a baby's head would do on the outside because I mean let's face it, it's a similar size isn't it at the end of the day <laughs> Jane was 21 when she had her first implants but one cup size to a 32d there we are Jen, why did you have the implants in the first place? I don't really know, Jenny, to be honest. I mean, because I just think it was jumping on the bandwagon of every other glam model that was out there because it was the in thing to do 12 years ago to get implants. And cause, because I was naturally a C cup, so for my height and frame, big, big yeah, big, big because I'm like sort of five foot tall, and obviously, when I'm not pregnant, size six. Jane later swapped her D cups for E cups and then a surgeon fitted her with a special implant with a built in pump which took her to a gigantic double H. It's a bag that they actually fill with saline, which is salt water, with a little valve from under your armpit. They pump it up slowly. And then obviously as the swelling goes down, they can keep adding saline to the actual, you know, bag. So what my surgeon did was obviously exploit this to the extreme. And we just kept adding like 50 mils at a time. Because I was young and just wanted the biggest boobs in Britain. <laughs> you know, it, for then it was like, just do it, I don't care, do you know what I mean? But I went up to a 32 double H and I probably could have still had some in then, but at that... Uh, I mean now, mm -hmm. and now I'm, I mean you can you can say I've probably got an extra stone added to my body at like half a stone each. Literally, feel the weight. Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> like, so th there's like an extra stone like added. Have we done it? When Jane first had the implants done the very first time, were you, were you sort of dubious or against it or? I was definitely against it, definitely because I thought she was as she were natural. She looked fine. I didn't think she needed to go any bigger. Being pregnant with all the extra weight on top is causing Jane real problems. Joking apart, mine's <laughs> upside down oh. for my bra. Because I was very thin then. Mm. I could do that now. I had it the opposite way around, because I had bigger boobs when I was about 14 when I first started Did wearing you? a bra. Yes, and then they just shrunk. I think it was from losing weight, but yeah, they just, you know, I'm getting fat. older, losing puppy fat, and I just lost all my boobs. <laughs> so have any of your early experiences changed the way that you feel about your boobs now? Or? Well, I remember I went to school with a bra, and, you know, you have a see-through shirt, the summer shirt, and someone went, ah, and pinged my brows to this boy. And um, went, as if you need a bra, you're flat-chested, pigeon chest, pigeon chest. Oh. And then now I think, hmm, well, I hope you're watching. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, I think that that age is really important into how, as to how you're going to be about mm, yourself. Yeah. And I mean, I remember a boy that I was next to, I had no, I, you know, I was just starting to, to develop, and he bent over and grabbed one oh, of no. my non-existent breasts. <laughs> for me, I found it so violating. I was completely shocked. And I'm sure for, for a good few years afterwards, that's part of the reason that I was like, I don't want boobs, I don't want boobs. Because it was just a, quite a violating experience. If you want to contact that guy, you can contact me a strange way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really remember going to get my first bra. Do you remember? Because you were never a big... So girl. when you did get <laughs> me a bra, you got me one just to feel sorry for me. <laughs> no, it was like a sports bra, wasn't it? More of a sports bra you had to... to because you were very athletic. And you need, you know, what, what little bit you had. You needed to be kept in check. <laughs> I was basically, I got a bra because everyone else had bras. Basically, yeah. 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 I didn't ever actually need one. <laughs> I've just got this mental picture of you in that netball tabard. In the park. Uh, you, you had the, the green tabard for the netball yeah. team. <laughs> and it'd be flapping about in the wind. <laughs> Everybody else's was like, fair. was fair. <laughs> it'd be flapping around everywhere. When years ago, when I thought I didn't want to actually have a boob mm. job, I think I'm so glad I didn't do it because there's been so many clothes. I mean, like, you can wear that you don't have to wear the bra, whether you can just because of the small, smaller boobs do have the benefits. But when I have kids, if they do start to go south, I'll get them lifted. I won't get anything put in, I'll just get them. If they go down any further, I'll get them lifted up. Why? Because I don't want boobs down my knees. No, I, I, I think there's too much emphasis put on the actual breast. Although I'm still not totally confident about my boobs, I've come to a decision. I've just popped out, Ella's drying in there, and I'm 
Actually, on my way down here, I was so dubious about getting the whole thing done. But now I've come, I've seen um, how lovely Ken and Jenny are and what beautiful work they do. I think I'm going to go for it and have it done. I was never thought I'd get my boob cast on telly, but I'm just having one done. And you're not going to see my boob. Not at all. For pure, pure personal <laughs> reasons, they look fantastic, you know. And they are very attractive, but more what was more noticeable for me is when Rachel had it done, subconsciously I think something must have changed inside. You must feel more sort of womanly is the only way to put it because you sort of exuded. I mean, my confidence had come back. Yeah, you exuded. Without me even knowing it. So you felt whole. Yeah. Yeah. Rachel is, you know, she's, she's amazing. And seeing what she's been through and her spirit and what she's gone through. I mean, four years of, of living with one breast and it was, no, it was hard for her. Every day it was hard for her. And now she's come through it, she's smiling and, you know, it, it just makes you think, boom, to yourself, you know, for, for moaning about my boobs not looking nice in this top or, you know, it's like you've just got to learn to live with what you've got and love what you've got and, you know, don't take, a, don't take things for granted. Life, don't take life for granted. Talking to Rachel and others made me realise exactly how much our breasts affect our confidence, our sense of femininity and our sexual relationships. My journey and it's brought me here to New York to meet a photographer whose latest project is to take photographs of women going about their business bare-breasted. New York is the one state in America where women can bear their breasts legally in public. You never know, perhaps it'll rub off on me. You're right. It was great. I thought I was going to be nervous and I wasn't. It wasn't so bad. Quite liberated and I free. feel liberated and free. Why did you decide to do this? Um, well, men walk around with their tops off all the time. Why not women? Do it on the beach. Why not in the middle of New York City? <laughs> in two years, photographer Jordan Matter has photographed hundreds of women on the Big Apple streets. What made you start this project? Uh, well, initially it was inspired by uh, the hysteria that surrounded the Janet Jackson wardrobe malfunction. Oh, the nipple and gate. Well, the nipple gate, right, yeah. And uh, we were led to believe in this country that uh, the entire nation was outraged. And uh, simultaneously, I found out that it's legal for women to be top free in New York State. So I started photographing women top free in all of New York City. How was it? Were you cold? I was fine until this big gust of wind came along and all of a sudden, whoa! <laughs> so why did you decide to get involved in this Oh, uh, because I was raised European and to me they're just breasts. It's Do this. Oh, it's I'm nothing. Not just, I'm just not sure if I fancy the oh, idea yeah. of having a little body well, attached so to you, 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 you feed on demand. My bee squeamish is personal, but what's going on when a woman gets told off by the police for breastfeeding on a public bench? So, this is the offending bench, or the bench that you offended. Uh -huh. Tell me what happened. What happened was, we came out of the post office and Eve was crying, so I decided then to give her a quick feed, because it was a mile and a half from home. So we came to this bench, to me, you know, you're not harming anybody. It's quite private, you've got your backs to the road, yes. not that you need to. But... Yes, and we had the buggy here, and we had an umbrella off the buggy, so when I had her down here, it was shielded. So we quickly fed for five to ten minutes, and then I just started to head towards home and a police car went by and an officer jumped out of the passenger side and he said, excuse me, I need to have a word with you. We've had a complaint from a member of the public um, stating that you were you know, breastfeeding on the public bench and he That's... just went on to state that um, if I could refrain from doing it in the future. <gasps> so as he was talking, I, I butted in and I said, no, hold on a minute, I haven't committed a crime. And he says, yes, I know that, therefore, yes, I can't do you, no crime to be committed. However, could I suggest, and that's where he went on, like a restaurant or a cafe or something of that nature. Margaret made the news because it was a policeman who told her off, but many share his view and aren't keen to see breastfeeding on our streets. A National Childbirth Trust survey last year found that 63% of women have had rude or unpleasant comments from people for breastfeeding in public. 
After her run-in with the police, Margaret retreated to a breastfeeding cafe in Norwich, one of many in the country. I'm wondering if coming here will change my own attitudes towards breastfeeding. Hi, I'm Jenny. Happy. How are you doing? Very good, thank you. This is set up like a cafe so that women feel confident about socialising instead of feeling they have to stay at home um, and be out of society because they're breastfeeding. And most women who come here then have the confidence to go to any cafe, and, and that's what's been happening. So what are the benefits of actually breastfeeding? Babies that are breastfed, there are major health benefits like um, exclusive breastfeeding prevents eczema and uh, gastroenteritis, children are less likely to be admitted to hospital um, because they've been breastfed. There's a reduction in the incidence of, of childhood obesity because fat cells are laid down differently than they are with formula milk. And also, breastfeeding offers some protection against breast cancer, but many would still prefer it was done in private. I mean, it's still a big taboo, though, isn't it? I mean, in public places, people still are sort of a bit like, they don't quite know where to look. You probably look around the room, you probably don't see any breasts on the table. You'll see babies at the breast, but yeah. you don't see any exposure. What a baby's head does on the outside, so it stimulates it from really early on, So, which is why, like, now I'm four and a half months, but I'm still leaking all over. What, so, so because the implants, you, you yeah, leak because, earlier? Yeah, because mine are so extreme. It's, you know, the pressure, they've said, that's why I leak early, the pressure of those sort of rubbing, it's doing like a stimulating effect, which is what okay. a baby's head would do on the outside, because, I mean, let's face it, it's a similar size, isn't it, at the end of the day? Jane was 21 when she had her first implants, but one cup size to a 32D. There we are. Oh, Many lovely. Things. Thank you. Jane, why did you have the implants in the first place? I don't really know, Jenny, to be honest. I mean, because I just think it was jumping on the bandwagon of every other glam model that was out there because it was the in thing to do 12 years ago to get implants. And cause, because I was naturally a C cup, so for my height and frame. Big, big, yeah, big. Yeah, big, because because I'm like sort of five foot tall, and obviously, when I'm not pregnant, size six. Jane later swapped her D-cups for E-cups and then a surgeon fitted her with a special implant with a built-in pump which took her to a gigantic double H. It's a bag that they actually fill with saline, which is salt water, with a little valve from under your armpit. They pump it up slowly. And then obviously as the swelling goes down, they can keep adding saline to the actual you know, bag. So what my surgeon did was obviously exploit this to the extreme and we just kept adding like 50 mils at a time. Because I was young and just wanted the biggest boobs in Britain, <laughs> you know, it, for then it was like, just do it, I don't care, do you know what I mean? But I went up to a 32 double H and I probably could have still had some in then, but at that, at that <laughs> I mean now, mm. and now I'm. I mean, you can you can say I've probably got an extra stone added to my body, like half a stone each. Literally, feel the weight. Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> like, so th there's like an extra stone Dad, added. Have we done it? When Jane first had the implants done the very first time, were you, were you sort of dubious or against it, or? I was definitely against it, definitely because I thought she was, as she were natural. She looked fine. I didn't think she needed to go any bigger. Being pregnant with all the extra weight on top is causing Jane real problems. Joking apart, my internal organs are literally like my stomach's crushed in between like the baby and the implants. It's discomfort and I have to sleep sitting up because otherwise I literally like, with a weight that's pushing up on my lungs and the breast pressing down, okay. it makes me when I'm asleep very breathless. Like now, probably once I've had this baby, I probably will go smaller because just things like family holidays, Jenny, are like difficult or going swimming. It's just hard, you know, being stared at for I was by the swimming pool on holiday and you come out, I'll be for you, man. But I want a size that's going to be where... I could only actually wear that for maximum of about a day because it would irritate my skin. When you had the one breast, were you conscious all the time? Yeah, I mean, you're permanently paranoid that nobody's going to be able to accept you for the, for the way you are, um, that, you know, you'll be rejected. It's, it's such an obvious emotion for people that are one-breasted or I suppose for anybody that's got some deformity, whatever you want to... I mean, I, I looked at it, I suppose, as a deformity, and, that, and I shouldn't have done. Rachel met her partner, Becky, just six months after her right breast was removed. I think Rachel, understandably, was quite 
paranoid um you know any new partner any new relationship um so she was really honest from the start and told me straight away i think perhaps rachel thought i'd be scared off and mm. perhaps best to sort of get in their first kind of attitude i can say hand on my heart it never never to me was an issue my genuine concern was that i would make rachel feel uncomfortable and i actually i you know i actually when we first you know got to that point i actually said you know are you okay to take your top do you want to take your top off and rachel said yes so yeah. you were worried about making you feel uncomfortable the other way, vice yeah. versa? Yeah, you, sort of I don't think you wanted me, me... You didn't want mm. me to put up, be put off, which mm. I knew I wouldn't, but Rachel was not inside my head. Now that Rachel's had a breast reconstruction, she knows what it feels like to have her body back again. And for Becky, Rachel's a different woman. How do you feel about Rachel's boobs now? Brilliant. <laughs> pure, pure, pure personal <laughs> reasons. They look fantastic, you know. And they are very attractive, but more what was more noticeable for me is when Rachel had it done, subconsciously I think something must have changed inside. You must feel more sort of womanly is the only way to put it because you sort of exuded. I think my confidence had come back. Yeah, you exuded. Without me even knowing it. So you felt whole. Yeah. Yeah. Rachel is, you know, she's she's amazing. And seeing what she's been through and her spirit and what she's gone through, I mean, four years of, of living with one breast and it was, no, it was hard for her. Every day it was hard for her. And now she's come through it, she's smiling and, you know, it, it just makes you think, boom, to yourself, you know, for, for moaning about my boobs not looking nice in this top or, you know, it's like you've just got to learn to live with what you've got and love what you've got and, you know, don't take, don't take things for granted. Life, don't take life for granted. Talking to Rachel and others made me realise exactly how much our breasts affect our confidence, our sense of femininity, and our sexual relationships. Um, not at all with, with Ken and Jenny, because it made me feel really comfortable. It can be a Valentine's Day present for dogs. Exactly. When I'm away from home, we'll have a boob to play yeah, with. Right, here we go, we just let over. And there, it is. and there you are, inside out. Ah! Right, that's the mould done. Now an agonising wait before you, or maybe just I, see the final cast. I'm getting a little bit more comfortable about my boobs, so now it's time for some serious home truths. Growing up, I was always jealous of your boobs, especially when we used to go when we started going clubbing together. <laughs> when we started going clubbing together, I used to wear, like, all these little, little tops with... And at the time, it was when there was like uh, the lycra that were all tied around the back room fashion. Then were the days. And um, mine was just like two jelly tots and an ironing board. And you'd come out and it was like, good And I was just felt so inferior. You're saying that I dress like a slut. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were dressed like a slut. <laughs> so, Pat, do you, are you happy with your boobs? Not today. Not today. Not today. No. Right now. No. Not right now, no, <laughs> at, wow. at this age. I oh. don't know, because they're probably going south. Oh, I thought you meant not today, but it might be tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> they're getting bigger. I, you know, you feel not as attractive with them. No. Mm. No. So, no. <laughs> Mum, are you happy with your boobs? Not really. I'd like them smaller. Dad likes your boobs now. That's what oh, I said to before. She went, no, your dad's a leg man. What about bra sizes? How often do you get your bras, your, your breasts measured? Never. I've never uh, tried a bra on before I bought it. Never. Oh, well, I, I, I have now. I, I do now. It was before the wedding, and I went to three separate before places, and um, I was measured between 38C in one place, 36D in another, and a 34DD in another. And these were all qualified bra fitting places. <laughs> so you never got, you don't even try them on before you buy them. Well, how you, do you should, because you drive me mad sometimes. You, because your bras, are, you see that side. thing sometimes from the side, and I feel like going, and your mum, what size are you? I'm 36C. But mum, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> because we have like the D and the E sticking out the top. <laughs> When it comes to our bra size, I'm going to find out how wrong we've got it. So off to a leading bra fitter who's helped thousands of women get it right, including the Queen. So maybe she can bring the royal touch to my jelly tots. 
85% of women are wearing the wrong size bra. As many as that? Absolutely. Today you're going to be fitting some women for, for bra sizes. What do you right. expect to find? I will probably find that, that um, the person that I'm fitting is wearing a bra that is too big around the back. And so what's happening is they're getting the cup fitting by, where, say, wearing 36C or 36D, where they probably might even be 